what is up? My dog is lost in here. Uh, we have a lot of fishing we're gonna get to in a moment, but I need to kind of say a few things to you guys. Um, sorry I haven't posted a video since the Amazon, but I just want to say thank you to how well everyone responded and how much everyone enjoyed the Amazon video. I put a ton of time and effort into it. It was just cool to see it pay off like that. But since then, it's been about a month and a half, almost two months, and I haven't posted a video, and there's a couple reasons why. Some great things, some not so great things. So I posted that video in the middle of December. Christmas time came, New Year's, and was just like, you know what, we're gonna take this time to just spend it with family. Found out my wife is actually pregnant with our second kid, so that's really exciting and awesome. So kind of dealing with all that. And then unfortunately, about two and a half, three weeks ago, my wife's father actually passed away. And so we've been dealing a lot with the fallout of all of that. And, you know, she's been super busy with her sisters, just trying to figure everything out. We just actually had the funeral about a week and a half ago. Um, everyone's doing all right, you know, the best they can, my wife and all that, but just figuring a lot of stuff out. And then on good news, with all of the busy stuff happening of me being a dad and having a second kid on the way and running my own business, uh, it's become a lot for me. And you could probably tell that in the fact that I'm only able to get out like one video a month sometimes because I'm just so busy like trying to figure out how to be a good dad and do things around the house. And you know, my wife, she wants me to get out and do as much as possible. And sometimes I just don't have it in me to leave home and do this. So things are changing. I have actually hired a cameraman and assistant for the channel. Probably the biggest step that this channel is going to be taking. And it is someone you guys know and have seen in the videos before. It's my best friend, Jacob. He's actually going to be moving down to where I live, staying in his own little place. And we are going to be tackling the new year at max speed um everything's getting bumped up from the content from the amount of content and the quality of content on the main channel to what we're going to be putting out on the patreon it's totally getting revamped with the help of him being here it's going to increase the ability to work on additional projects like creating my own lures and merchandising and clothing and it's just you know it's going to be a really great year and i'm excited for it it's all going to be about new beginnings and new projects and I can't wait to share this year with you. And so here's kind of a, a recap of the past couple weeks when Jacob and I have been able to get out and fish a little bit. You know, we wanted to be hitting it at full speed, but all the stuff that kind of happened really slowed us down. And so, you know, over the past two and a half weeks or so, we've only been able to get out about three times, but it's been really fun. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Whew. What is up, my dog's lost in here. Beautiful morning, and I have my main man Jacob running behind the camera today. We have a bucket full of live shrimp, and we're gonna go hit some flats and try to chase down big reds, big snook, big trout, big black drum, and just really grind the entire day and see if we can get some big fish. I've been up since 3.30 in the morning, 6.30 right now, and we have like another 40 minutes to drive. So let's go get after it. We have a top water rigged up right there, golden black. It is cold this morning. It's about 64 degrees out here right now, maybe a little even colder than that. And we have a bucket of four dozen jumbo live shrimp, but I'm gonna throw a top water because it's really overcast. And in this nasty, nasty weather, sometimes big trout like to come out and slurp a top water when it's like this. So we're gonna try our luck and I just can't resist the top water. So let's start there. Oh, big wake on me, big wake on me. Big red fish. Oh. 
Dude, full back out of the water. Oh, there he goes, right there. Just swam right next to the boat. He followed it for so long. That was like my fifth cast of the morning. That was like a 28 inch red. I just saw him right there. Back out of the water, coming after that thing. It's a good sign, it's a good sign. Two redfish in the first four minutes of us floating. All right, oh, and it's windy, <laughs> windier nail out here and it's 60 degrees and there's one other boat out here and they're in the spot that we wanted to go to. So Jacob and I are talking, we're gonna run to the wind laid side of the river here and just get out of the wind. So Whew. All right, we have ran to the other side. It was a rough and nasty run, enough to where we have to wipe down all of our equipment and stuff because we got sprayed so bad. I don't think I can even describe like the mental anguish I feel listening to the wind whip through my ears all day long when I'm trying to fish. And I already feel like way better and way more confident coming over to this kind of wind laid down side. So hopefully we can uh, make it happen. It's been so long. I don't even know if I remember what a fish biting feels like. Nice red. Oh, whoo, baby. Finally into one, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That, my friends, is a beautiful redfish. Riding the line between a rat and a good one. I bet he's probably 18 inches, 19 inches. So almost like lower, lower slot. But it's a cold, windy, overcast day. And we've been working our tails off to catch some fish. And we're actually starting to see some. And I think, honestly, as the day goes on and the sun comes up, the fishing's only going to get better and better. We've thrown top waters, We've thrown live shrimp. And just put a paddle tail on. About four casts in, we got one. The spot is huge. You have a big meaty spot, huh? Yeah. Thank you, buddy, for your, your patronage here. This is a beautiful fish, man. They're pretty light colored for the most part on the sides. They're not super pumpkin-y around here where we're fishing. But they're all beautiful and they're all bodacious. Sometimes a live shrimp just ain't it. Kind of rocking an old school method here. This is just a small bucktail jig with a live shrimp on the end of it. And it kind of combines the best of both worlds of throwing an artificial and using a live bait at the same time. It's pretty overcast, pretty windy. We're hoping to sight cast a lot more than we actually are today, but we still want to use the live shrimp. So this allows me to blind cast with a live shrimp and kind of drag it around like I could a lure, but still have that really high probability of getting bit with a shrimp. Like the places like Morocco and stuff like that, like have a ton of. Oh gosh, what is my drag slip on this? What was that about, man? That is not good. But a trout is good. <laughs> Just talking about 23andMe and Ancestry.com. Second fish of the morning, a beautiful speckled trout, probably 14, 15 inches. Whew. It's been a slow morning, but like I said, as the sun's been picking up, the fish are starting to pick up too. And that was on that little uh, bucktail jig with a shrimp just dragging really slow. Jake and I were discussing the intricacies of 23andMe and where we're from and how much Neanderthal we got <laughs> in the trout bit. Isn't that funny how conversations on a boat work like that? You just never know where a conversation will take you when you're sitting out in the water. But that is a beautiful one. We're going to get him unhooked. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not, not exactly a good release on there, but we're moving and shaking. I really hope we can catch a big trout or a big red today, man. That's the goal, is a big one. It's just nice to be out here fishing. It's been a while since I've really gotten a fish. Like, that would be perfect. Ooh, that's got bumped. What the f Oh my god. What is wrong with this reel? Oh, the anti-reverse isn't even on. It just spun backwards. I feel like it just broke my freaking finger. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> the like anti reverse on this reel is broken or something. And I just set the hook and the handle just literally smashed my finger. It's so hard. I feel like I broke my index finger. <laughs> That is a lit up redfish. Holy blue. Yeah, that is one of the bluest redfish I've ever seen. Wow, that redfish has one of the bluest tails I've ever seen. I don't know how much you can see it now on the camera or anything like that, but. It's the water bottle. We'll give it a second. We'll grab it. That is literally insane. <laughs> I legitimately like I'm I'm having trouble bending my index finger right now. That hurts so bad. I don't know what just happened. There was like the anti-reverse isn't on and I set the hook backwards and the reel started spinning backwards at max speed and smashed my knuckles between the reel and the handle. I'm being a little drama queen. I'm like literally having trouble bending my all right, go for a release on Buddy here. Really want to show up. This is without a doubt the bluest tail I've ever seen on a redfish. I mean, that is just unbelievably beautiful. So vibrant. That's incredible, man. Little rat, red. Lost in being a drama queen. <laughs> All right, a beautiful trout right there. I'll tell you what, they're making us work for it today and we're using live bait and we're still working our tails off to catch these fish. It's probably about 18 to 20 inch sea trout a beautiful one i actually watched him just come up and scarf it i didn't even feel him bite we are coming off of a i don't know a cold front and another cold front kind of rolled through this morning while we we're fishing and so it's just tough out here and uh we're working but we're catching them and i hopefully we can ding a few more fish or at least a big one before we call it a day but we're taking medium-sized trout as a big win here Beautiful stuff. These fish are kicking my butt. Well, today has been a nice kick in the teeth. Not really. I said to Jacob, I was like, sometimes I need to have better perspective. You know, we came out. Beautiful weather, got to wear a sweater the entire day. We fished, caught two redfish, two trout. Life's pretty okay if that's a bad day of fishing. I think Jake and I need to go get some Mexican food because I'm about three hours from home and I need to drive tonight. So we want to get up the water early. So we're gonna <laughs> GoPro die. We're gonna get up the water early so we can go grab some food and so I can get home before it's too late. Let's go get some food. So about a week later, I found some time to sneak out and go fish, but only had time for an afternoon session. So Jacob and I were a couple hours north and looking for some redfish trout and black drum, but we only had a couple hours to really make it happen. Really big fish. I'm gonna throw way past it and then try to bring it to it. It's not really working. Don't really have the, the casting balance figured out on this new rod. That could do it. I get the snuck. Yeah. 
I'm gonna wait on it. <laughs> oh, what? He put his nose right on it and then didn't bite. I think. Oh, man. <laughs> he got like, I mean, I just slow. I was twitching that fish into, into action and just like watching him slowly kick, slowly kick. Then I twitched it once and he put his nose right up against it, but never actually bit down. Oh, he's still there though. I still see him. Oh, there he is. That, he might have spooked right there. It ended up just being a funky day, man. We saw a handful of redfish and snook that we would throw at and they would never spook. They just would not show any interest in the lures we were tossing at them. We tried a bunch of different stuff and that kind of just went on for most of the afternoon until it got a little later and the wind changed directions. All right, it has been a uh, challenging day. I actually thought today was gonna be like sight casting mania. And the second we got in the water, the clouds rolled in, the wind swept up. It's changed directions twice now today. So we have flip flopped different sides of the river multiple times trying to just like get out of the wind because you got five miles of open river here, open bay basically, and it gets rolling whatever side the wind's not blowing on, even if it's only blowing eight miles per hour. But it's getting a little later. I put on a top water right here and have a mirror dean on my smaller rod. I'm really trying to see if we can dial in a big trout or a big redfish before the night's over. Just a beautiful day being out here. And I think maybe catching a few fish would make it a little more fun. That's great regardless. Ooh. Good Lord. We have a trout. We have a fish, man. We've been working tail. Working our tail off, I should say. And it's not a very big one, <laughs> but it's a fish, man. Uh, cameraman Jacob, he caught a trout when the camera was off like three hours ago. Me, first fish of the day kind of guy. Beautiful little sea trout right there, probably only 12 inch or nothing to write home about, but it's our first fish of the day. We've only been fishing for five and a half hours, <laughs> so it's great. Um, they are an amazing fish, member of the drum family, and always try to wet your hands before you handle one because they have very, very fine little scales that it's very easy for them to get damaged. So you just take care of them. All right, the seal has been broken now. It's time to catch some fish. We're throwing, just kicking it absolutely old school, one of my favorite lures of all time, the Heat and Spook XT saltwater version, red and white, man. Might be my favorite lure on planet Earth. If someone said, hey, you can only throw one lure for the rest of your life, it'd be either this in red and white or in black and chartreuse. Literally my favorite thing of all time. So, let's see if we can dunk a big one with this lure. Or the fish. That might be a decent trout. He is coming at me so fast. Right off of a stick, right against the bank. Not a giant one, but a better one. Moving in the right direction. Whew, it's a beautiful fish. Actually, pretty good. Yeah, it's a good one. There's a beautiful one, probably about a 19 inch trout, getting in the right direction. That's, you know, upper slot, good fish, but we're looking for a jumbo one tonight. But the fact that they're starting to chew has got me very fired up. Trout have some type of spectacular ability when they first eat, they just shake their mouth at the surface so aggressively that they always look like they're gonna be freaking 30 inches long. I thought this one was gonna be like a 24, but more like an 18, 19. But my opinion, Probably the prettiest fish in the river, one of them for sure. Tonight is finally coming together for us. You know what? Today has been a lesson. You know what? Today has been a lesson of persistence. Uh, it would have been really easy to call it when the weather started getting really windy and it had been like three or four hours. We haven't caught a fish. I have a three hour drive home <laughs> still tonight. But we suck it out and we're finally starting to catch some trout. And hopefully, the big one's waiting around the corner for us. Fire it up, man. We need a big one. We just need a big one. All right. 
Well, can't say we didn't try our hardest today. We are basically completely out of light and we still gotta make a run back to the boat ramp, so we gotta get scrambling. We tried our hardest out here today, threw a bunch of different stuff, and it just really wasn't happening. Winter fishing can be pretty tough, I find. It's really hit or miss. Sometimes you can do really well. Oh my gosh, I'm getting waked on right now. <laughs> Sometimes you can do really well and sometimes it's just kind of whatever. And we definitely didn't leave anything on the table today. But we gotta get back to the ramp and start heading. What is up my dogs lost in here beautiful crispy morning out on the river we're chasing tarpon redfish snook and largemouth bass today we're fishing in a brackish water system and i'm super stoked it's gonna be cold had a full moon a night ago so the conditions are gonna be a little tough but it's gonna be howling wind out in like the big parts of the river so we thought we'd tuck in today and see if we can find some big fish tucked up inside and right now we're throwing the fly rod for some big old tarpon that are rolling around here. On that one. I know. We'll throw, I mean, we're surrounded by tarpon right now. Yeah. They're very, very finicky to get to eat. And also coming off of the full moon. Ooh. <laughs> that was like 40 pounds of crab. All right, we have moved a little further back in the river. We started the morning kind of in a wider area and there were some bigger tarpon rolling around and we had a mom and baby dolphin follow us around for 45 minutes this morning. We never got any bites up. So idled a couple miles and we're moving back to where there's a more diversity of snook, redfish, largemouth bass, tarpon went back in here, longnose gar. We're gonna fish really slow right now on the bottom because it's pretty cold this morning and just bump around a little shrimp and see what we can find. And as it warms up, hopefully the tarpon and snook might be a little more apt to feed. And we'll start making some cast of moving baits, but you know, we're in the position right now of to figure out what they're eating, figure out where the fish are at. And I got about a six foot gator swimming right up to the boat behind us right now.
Oh. I hooked a fish into a log. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure it's like a big mouse sleeper or something and I just pinned it into a log. <laughs> yeah, I can see it's still there. <laughs> I don't know what I have on. It's not very big, and I set the hook and hit a log with the fish attached to the hook and pin the fish into the log here. Dude. It's like a 10-inch tarpon. It is the smallest tarpon I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, it's a snook. Okay, I thought it was like a 10-inch tarpon. If you can guess, this is not the size fish we're looking for this morning. Not quite the opposite. But, monkey's up the back. We got a little fish in the boat. Thank you, sir. Sorry for pinning you into a log. Time to catch some big fish. Sometimes you gotta get the first one out of the way. You gotta weed through a couple little dinkies. Start finding the big ones. <laughs> the tarpon right there. I don't think I've ever seen anything more relaxed in my entire life than that alligator laying on that log right there. Reminds me of my dog laying on the couch. I want to go over and give him a nice little scratch, you know? Got one, Tarpon. So on roll. Pump it a few times. <clears throat> Unless a jack scooped it up, I literally threw in front of a rolling fish. It might not be him. I literally threw directly in front of a rolling fish, though. <clears throat> Can't tell what it is. Oh my god. It's a freaking enormous sail cat. <laughs> <laughs> I literally saw a like a 40 pound tarpon roll, let it by eight feet, bait drops, hits the bottom, start reeling, boom! And I'm like, dude, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Whoa, buddy. A little snot rocket here. The tarpons roll behind the boat while I'm freaking doing this. Yeah, about a six pounder right there. I, I can't get over that. I mean, we've been having a real slow day and I, I mean, I could not have casted better on this tarpon I watched roll. And it's just like, this thing must have just been sitting on top of the tarpon's butt or something, man. You big old sail donkey. Uh, well, Godspeed. <laughs> I can't freaking believe that. <laughs> so annoying. And I'm absolutely slimered. I don't think it's hard. Well, we have consolation sail cats to keep us entertained while we pray that these tarpon are going to turn around and eat. You know, we're, we're working really hard. Jacob and I are actually, one of my favorite parts about fishing is kind of what Jacob and I are doing, which is getting really deep in the process of running through baits, cycling through tactics of how we're fishing for these tarpon, thinking about, okay, it's sunny, it's windy, you know, observing how they're coming up and rolling and really trying to dial in and figure out what's gonna get the bite. And we're in the process right now. And hopefully something's gonna change for us. We're either gonna click in or the tarpon are gonna click up and we're gonna start catching some big, big fish because there's some big ones around. All right, I picked up a white fluke here. Let's see if we can finesse a tarpon or a snook out from some, some structure. Get dirty with the skip casts.
early in the morning. Oop. Earth. Stuck. Whoo, wow. Today has been a grinder where a 20 inch snook is like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you what though. That is a beautiful specimen of a snook right there. Perfect, healthy guy. We are gonna unhook him and release him and fish are getting bigger. I don't know, Jacob's Tarpon Snook was like one tenth the size, so anything is better. And uh, as the night is getting later and later, it feels like the fish are finally starting to pick up. So maybe we'll be able to tangle in with a big snook or hopefully one of the big giant tarpon we're seeing would be most delectable. Beautiful. Favorite fish on planet Earth right there. Love to see them swim off nice and healthy. It literally feels like fishing in like a ravine or something right now. It's super cool. I can't be hurt like this again. I know, I'm on to them. Their trickery and deceitful ways of making me think I'm hooking carpet on the bottom. But in fact, it's a fatty sail cat. Someone asked, you catching them? Dude, you wouldn't believe. It. Studs all day. Man, it's freaking studs. Dude, I just want to catch a tarpon. <laughs> I just want to catch a big tarpon so bad. There's a lot more you could want. Well, today has been one giant swift kick to the nads. <laughs> um, it's been a long day. We've been out here for now 12 hours. And Jacob made a good point. He's like, we've caught a lot of fish, but it's not anything good. <laughs> we got one more spot we're hitting before it's completely blackout, throwing a big giant fluke, and maybe we'll have our tarpon moment right here to close out the night. Would that be a beautiful thing? Sure the vulture flying over my head was not a good omen. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was like an eagle, it'd have been like, dude, that's a sign. A black vulture, and here comes more of them. So, uh, party on. You know, the past few months have been a bit tough on myself and my wife included as well just both experiencing some pretty close loss and it really feels like for me i'm, fi I'm finally starting to come out on the other side of things and the light on the tunnel is going to clear it up and you know i'm really excited for 2023 where 2022 to be honest i just was like ready for it to be done and you know some wrench has been thrown in the works jacob was supposed to really start filming for me full time and be living in the same town as me about a month and a half ago and that all just got delayed with you know personal issues and stuff like that but life happens and i i'm really thankful for all of your guys support and everything you know that you've watched me through all these years and i think this is going to be the greatest year yet and uh i hope you guys are ready for it and i'm really looking forward to getting after it.